I pride myself on making good sampled sounds. I've made a few over the years, but last week I made something that was a bit meh. I suspect it may have been the source material. <coughs> or the space I recorded it in. Maybe if I were to be more adventurous, that would help. If you haven't heard yet, Piano Book is doing something amazing for Christmas. What we hope to do is create the world's biggest choral sample library. Piano Book needs you. Anyone can take part, even if you can't sing. Vocal style pads and atmospheres are more than welcome. Linked below is a page about how to take part and the two ways you can make submissions. So today, Angus is going to give us our first update on how the submission process is going, and we'll get our hands on the first beta. Exciting. I'm going to be having another go at my vocally challenged exaltations. Is that even a thing? I don't know what the exaltations are. That sounds good though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. It sounds great. But I want to experiment with something that I believe Deutsche Grammophon does, which is we record and enjoy the space, but we reduce or remove the differential between the time it takes sound to travel from here to here, and from here to Jane all the way down there. But first, I have a favour to ask. This year we released BBC Discover, uh, the BBC Symphony Orchestra in a single plugin, and I think it's just over 200 megabytes, so anyone can download it and anyone can afford it because it's free. Music Tech has kindly nominated us for a Gear of the Year award, and this is where I need your help. There are now 200,000 people making orchestral music that weren't at the beginning of the year, from Peru to Pakistan. It's quite phenomenal. And this prize would be a really amazing thing to reward the Spitfire Audio team who have worked so hard on this for. So if you think it is a, a worthy thing to vote for, I've linked it in the video description down below. Thanks in advance if you're able to spend 30 seconds doing this. Spread there. So I want to talk about time alignment between microphones in large spaces. Rumour has it, and really this, I can't find anything about it online, literally some bloke told me that Deutsche Grammophon time aligns its microphone signals in larger spaces. Let's have a look at Hans Zimmer drums and we've got two microphones, we've got our close and a far microphone signal. So let's just listen to the close. Tighty and snappy and then we've got this far microphone. Great, let's record those separately. So hear those together. Awesome. But let's go in and you'll see there's a considerable mismatch between the two. And what Deutsche Grammophon does is realign them. So let's have a version unaligned as it basically hits tape, so to speak. And then let's try and line these up a little bit. So let's just compare the two. That has a punchier feel, which could be, in certain circumstances, more desirable. So I thought, seeing as we're in this disused railway tunnel, with me making a total tit of myself, wouldn't it be interesting to see if we can get microphone sets as far apart as humanly possible to really see if time alignment is a preferable course of post-production. So I found every single XLR cable I could lay my hands on in the house and we daisy-chained them together in the Innocent Railway Tunnel in Edinburgh to give us a close mic that is a long way away from the stereo ambient mics that Jane has tethered to our portable recording device. The one problem with this tunnel is it's a bit drippy. Okay, nice and quiet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, a I think I'm quite loud and I'm quite good. Barong recorded, I've done it in this 
this kind of sloped method. So you instead of recording round robins, you just do loads and loads of different velocities. And we've got our coals here, and we've got our left 414 and our right 414. For me, that's not going to be a particularly usable sample. Absolutely fascinating how just going that little bit further gives us something that is basically unusable. So I think in the case of this Baron, that time travel is going to be necessary. So let's have a look at the difference there. It's pretty profound. And let's have a listen to how it sounds time aligned. So I stuck that into RX to get rid of some of the um, rain and then basically just chopped them up and organized them in order of soft to loud. And then you can see here, I've basically done all of the, there's 40 of them, 40 dynamic layers. So I've duplicated them so you can do left, right hand playing. Add some splosh to flatter it a bit more. It's good the raindrops aren't, aren't upsetting me too much. And I've also made it so you can pitch. Oh, that sounds really good. Really happy with that. Oh. Download using your productions in the link down below. Hi everyone, it's Angus here with a quick update on where we're at with the Winter Voices. So we've had about 25 different people submit so far and we've got a lot more samples than that. So what I've done is I've taken each sample, put them into their own bus, and then I've just created a quick mix of each note. So let's have a listen to see how they're sounding at the moment. So here's G0. Oh. Really cool. Um, some sort of like Mongolian throat singing going on there, which is cool. Um, as you get towards the middle of the keyboard, it becomes a bit more textual, which is, again, really cool. Oh. Very sort of um, gladiator there. And then it's more angelic towards the top end as well. It's great. Oh. And all those little textures are creating a really nice colour here. So I thought, let's not just leave it there. Let's actually create something for you all to download and play around with. So let's do a bit of a blue peter and skip to the next part of this. So this is Winter Voices 1.0, essentially uh, made with the 25 voices and the mix downs that I did in Logic. It's a really basic contact instrument. As you can see, I've only got one group with all of those samples within it. Um, I've looped these in the wave editor, as you can see, and I've applied the same loop to each sample, so it's all nice and even. In the uh, instrument itself, I've just put a stereo widener and a convolution reverb just to bring all the samples together. And scripting-wise, there's just a really simple uh, volume knob for expression and just an attack and release script that I have. I'll leave that open if you want to copy it for your instruments, that's absolutely fine. If you'd like to get involved, head over to pianobook.co.uk and click on the link to Winter Voices to find out how. If you want to be notified of when we release our betas and when some really fantastic free sample libraries are available, make sure you subscribe to the Piano Book YouTube channel. Okay, right, let's check out the beta, see how it's coming along, how exciting. Well, all I could say is to those of you involved in this beta, thank you so much. And do keep these submissions coming. So lots of questions coming in about Winter Voices. And for those of you who haven't seen any videos about it up till now, I'm actually going to be giving away five insane prizes. So stick around to listen to that and also the closing date. OK, so enough of banging drums. Time for me to make a fool of myself in a tunnel under Arthur's seat in Edinburgh. <laughs> I think that's all I can manage. So I resigned myself to recording just the one note 
that I could manage. And it's interesting because the Baron, we use the time aligned signal. And I actually think the unaligned signal is much stronger with the voices. It has a nice enforced kind of reflective quality about it that I enjoy. So I suspect the rain may be a problem along with my singing. So what I've done is I've taken all of those notes and I've duplicated them. But what I've done is I've duplicated that up to that, that up to that, and have altered the start times to give a real kind of uh, something that doesn't sound too much like a loop. And I thought for the fun of it, I'd stick it into a contact instrument to see how it sounded. One sample spread across the keyboard. I imagine up here, not gonna sound particularly useful, but what about down here? Is this finally gonna be my Winter Voices submission? quite good but that bloody rain back to the drawing board so details of how to submit are linked down below closing date 30th of november and remember for the top five most inspiring experimental eccentric mental submissions five prizes everything spitfire audio is going to release in 2021 and as i said before i know what's coming up and it is luscious the closing date is going to be the 30th of November to give my team and the Piano Book volunteers as much time as we can to make this as brilliant as possible, to bring us Christmas cheer on Christmas Day. So check out the links down below for the different ways in which you could submit. One note is fine, more is great, and if you can film it, awesome. We'll try and include those videos for the big Christmas Day film. Thanks as always for watching. Do subscribe if you haven't done already because there's going to be lots of updates to how we're getting along with Winter Voices alongside lots more fun treats. So ding the bell if you want to be notified the next time I put up a video and one of those for those brave souls who have made their submissions already.